Hi beauties. Today, I just wanted to do a quick get ready with me. We're not featuring any palettes or anything like that. Um, I've got this kind of like bright colored, multicolored purple shirt. So I figured I'd go with like a purple look. Um, so I picked up the uh, Revolution uh, Makeup Revolution London Forever Flawless Constellation and the Forever Flawless Utopia palettes. Both of them feature really beautiful purples and a couple really pretty blues as well. Um, the Constellation is one of my favorite palettes in this particular collection. Uh, it was the first palette that I ever used for Makeup Revolution and I did a video on it and I was like, I love it. And then the Utopia also features a lot of really pretty purple. So I figured we could make something cool with that. I'm not really going to talk about the makeup. It's just going to be kind of something I'm doing. <laughs> Instead, I had a really, we had a really weird night here the other night and I was just going to tell you guys that story because it was wild and um, it just kept getting wilder. So let's jump into story time. Sunday all day it was raining. We were going to film one of our Halloween looks. Part of the Halloween looks is, is I wanna give myself enough time for us to, after we film, go take pictures and stuff so I can post it on Instagram and show you guys like what the final look is. I had gotten up early on Sunday planning to do it and then I remembered it is supposed to rain all day. So, uh, so obviously that kind of, deterred our plan to film. Well, we were only really thinking about it. It had rained pretty hard and Saturday it was kind of had started to rain. In fact, we went and saw the house and because you know, it's a construction zone right now, it was very muddy. So we were gonna go up and see the house again with my mom cause she couldn't come with us Saturday. And that wound up just not happening. We were like, all right, it's just gonna be a chill day. We hung out, whatever. And I had to go to work. So it really wasn't, it, it was what it was. Well, I go to sleep. And I, you guys know I work in the middle of the night, so I go to sleep and uh, and when I work, I normally try and be in bed by like five or six o'clock. And I was pretty tired, so I laid down and at like probably 7.30, I think, Nikki wakes me up because there had been a tornado. Is it a watch or a warning? What was it? It was a warning, right? Like the conditions were right? We were in a tornado watch meaning that conditions were right and they were expecting it to potentially turn into a tornado. And, and it was literally exactly our area. It was, there was no like, oh, it, it could be coming your way. It was like, it was in our area. We get up and we're trying to get downstairs. Well, <laughs> under normal circumstances, we would have just gotten the powder room downstairs, which has no windows, like taken off the mirror off the, the wall and just all gotten in there and waited for it to pass. Well. Unfortunately, my dad threw out his back close to a month ago and uh, we keep waiting for it to get better. He's taking medicines and stuff, um, but it just hasn't healed yet and he can't move. Like he really can't walk on his own at all. So he's almost entirely bedridden. We have to figure out how the hell to get him into the bathroom. We start, we're clearing out. Bradley, my little brother is grabbing like the mirror and stuff off the bathroom wall. We're trying to get dad ready to get out of bed. We get him up. We're trying to force him to walk and that is not an easy task because he is really in a lot of pain. So <laughs> we're basically like, this is life or death, bud. Like just muscle through it. And he's like, I can't move any further. So we'd gotten him out of the bed and into the area right in front of my parents' room. Well, the area right in front of my parents' room is wet bar and it is like a, traditional style like bar type setting with like the glass shells. There's a mirror behind it. There's all these glass bottles, liquor bottles and stuff. And then there's like nothing but like wine glasses and crystal and li it's literally a death trap in a tornado. <laughs> so my dad's like, just leave me here and you guys get it. And we're like, we can't leave you here because this is the worst spot in the house. And he's kind of like, ignore I was the first one he saw. I was like, this is the worst spot in the house to be because if stuff starts flying around, you're covered, you're surrounded by glass. Like you can't just leave you here. At that point it was like, okay, let's adjust. So we're not gonna get him all the way to the powder room, which was close, but still had a little bit of a distance to try and, and get him over to. So we were like, all right, we gotta adjust. Like what are we gonna do now? So we start taking off all of the glassware, we move all the glassware. We're just like trying to get it into the sink, laying it flat. We're also not sure, you know, what's gonna happen. If the tornado comes right now, we may just have to leave him and cover him and go and then we'll get into the bathroom. So it was just, it was freaking wild. We're pulling off all the glassware. We did get it all off. We had turned on like as many lights out front and for as, as bad as everything was, we luckily didn't lose power, which actually is kind of a miracle. I was talking to my mom about it yesterday. And I was like, it's kind of a miracle because we lose power 
frequently here. Like just, I don't know what it, I don't know if it's our wiring or the way they have it set up here or whatever, but this just, our area, like we'll, middle of the day, sunny as hell and we'll just lose power and we're like, oh, okay. So we were really lucky to not have lost power. We've got the lights on in the backyard. We've got the, the lights on in the front yard as much as possible so that we can see, cause I'm trying to see, you know, like if, <laughs> if I can see like things start flying, then maybe, you know, we know. And I will say that's what I, I would have slept right through the whole damn thing. I had no idea anything was happening. I never heard my phone's alarm go off or anything. Cause you know, iPhones are really good about like giving you the warning alerts. I never heard anything. My mom was the one who was pretty much tracking it. And then she was the one who called up to, to Nikki who got me up and, but they gave us plenty of time, like a lot of time actually to, to prepare for it. Um, they had been kind of saying like, hey, monitor your conditions or whatever. We're, we'll let you know as soon as we think conditions get to a place where it actually might be uh, a cloud, a funnel cloud. And my mom had been watching it cause she was like, I didn't want to get you up. She talking to me yesterday. She was like, I didn't want to get you up. I knew you had to go to work. So I was trying to ride it out as long as possible. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, nope, this is not a joke anymore. This could be serious. And then pretty much like, you know, we're still flying, still trying to get, dad's in so much pain. He's like, just leave me, I don't even care. We're still flying. Nikki and I at one point ran upstairs to grab pillows and blankets because we're thinking if we had to, if we could move all the glass that way and we had to lay dad on the floor, we could cover him at least. So that way if he was, you know, if something fell on him or whatever, he would have the cushion of the pillows and the, the blankets. And so we are just trying to do whatever we could think because truthfully the powder room is actually a, I would think it's a pretty safe spot. Um, it's it, the house is two stories. It's a pretty large house. And so um, because of that, I feel like we would have, um, the, there's no windows. We're in the direct center of the house. It's sturdy. Um, I don't really worry about like the, the whole second story would have to either collapse in on us or be ripped off in order for us to be like vulnerable really in that spot, especially if we were to move like the mirror and everything out of the way. So that's a pretty safe area. But we were mainly worried about dad and trying to figure out what the hell to do with him. So yeah, and then as soon as it rolled through, it just was like, all right, you're good. <laughs> they were like, it's gonna last until 7.15. And so we had the news on and we could listen to the news um, kind of giving us updates about it. Around 7.10, I would say, they said that it looked like the pressure system was lifting so that Funnel clouds, if they were created, probably wouldn't be created on the ground. It would be created just up in the atmosphere. Then like 714, I think they released the thing. So now, now the house is a wreck. Dad's like trying to get back to bed because he's just done. He's like, I can't move anymore. So mom and bride are trying to get dad back to the bedroom. We've now moved all the glassware. It's just all over the kitchen. We brought blankets downstairs. We got my pillows from the bed were downstairs. So literally like there, it just, it, there was no tornado, but it looks like a tornado went through the house. It was just us in our, in our haste trying to get everything out of the way and situated. Then I was like, all right, well, I'll deal with this later. I'm, I'm exhausted. So I went back to sleep for a couple hours. I wake up to go to work and I get to work and I'm on my way driving to work. Well, one of the other issues I have is with my car. I love my car. It's older, it's a 2007. So it's definitely older and it hasn't, the last few years, ever since I went to college, it hasn't been, it hasn't lived in a garage. When it was in a garage, it, it was, you know, a little bit easier to deal with some of the issues. Well, one of the things that we learned real quick when I, I moved off to college and especially in Wilmington where it rains all the time because you're on the coast was that my car leaks pretty badly too. So um, it, the sunroof basically debris tends to fill it if it's exposed to the elements for too long. <laughs> when that happens, it starts to leak on the inside. So it's happened a couple times um, and you can just take like an air hose and blow it out. So it's, uh, it's not a big deal, but it definitely um, is a bit of a hassle sometimes. It had happened a couple months ago and it was leaking. I knew it was leaking and we had a really bad rainstorm. And one night when I was driving to work, um, I lost the ability to accelerate. And so I uh, like, as I'm driving, I'm like in the middle of an intersection trying to accelerate and I can't do it. And I was like, oh my God. So the first time it happened, it really freaked me out. Well, we got it fixed. Basically I took it to our mechanic and he was like, I think, oh, and my check engine light and some other light had come on too when this happened. So he was like, I think it's just that water is in your fuel tank. And there, that was really part of the issue because my tank was also low. It was like under a fourth of a tank. So he's like, I think that's part of the issue. Well, unfortunately I didn't realize it was supposed to rain that much and I wasn't thinking. And it was like, once again, my car wasn't leaking, but it was like, right. It's still like just under a fourth of a tank. 
So I'm almost to work, cruising along, doing my thing. I uh, lose my ability to accelerate going in a roundabout and I was like, oh my God, seriously. So I call Nikki and I'm like, hey, that thing's happening with my car again. I'm guessing because of this rainstorm. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get to work and if not, I don't know what to do. Thankfully, I did make it to work. I was fine. I was able to get to work and he met me after work and we got gas in my car and then he went and followed me home. We were hoping if I put gas in my car that would help because like basically what they've told me is they think that water gets in the fuel tank when it happens and so like sometimes when it's trying to like use gas to move, it's actually gaining water. Which makes sense, I guess, as somebody who doesn't know shit about cars, it does make sense to me as I'm listening to them, I'm like, okay, yeah, that sounds like that would be an issue. So we were hoping that if we just filled up the tank, it might help a little bit, but the drive home was still pretty rough. So, so pretty much now uh, we're hoping that my car is okay. Or like giving it a couple days to like drive out. And then if not, cause the last time we took it to the shop and it was, I paid a hundred dollars for them basically be like, I mean, there was, you know, there's like nothing we can do to fix it. Cause there's technically nothing wrong. It was just like, there was air in the water tank. It's been a while, it was a wild night. And then I also just, it wasn't really significant, but when I pulled into work, there was like a guy running through our parking lot and um, our <laughs> franchise has experienced a couple break-ins uh, in the past couple months. And so we were like all on edge with that. And I was just like, this tonight is great. I was like, I can't do this with tonight anymore. Tonight is too much for me. So, so that was my night the other night. Yeah, interesting story. I don't know why I just wanted to tell you guys because it was just so, it was so much that happened in such a short amount of time that I was almost like, I know, I know things are weird right now, but like, damn, I was not expecting this one. All right, this is the final look guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it was weird. It was just kind of me telling you guys the story, but it, it happened and I was like, that was so wild. I, I felt like I lived a century in that one night. So I felt like telling you guys. So yeah, if you did like it, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, subscribe because we're always doing weird stuff like this. So yeah. Other than that, I hope you guys are all safe, healthy. You have a wonderful day and you stay girly with the dark twist.